Hello, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be actually working on this uh, electric blanket. I received this in my one of my pallets. Uh, it does not work. I got no lights. So what I'm going to need, I'm going to need a multimeter, a screwdriver to work on this. Um, I have some solder and also I have a solder and iron here just in case I need to um, change a component or, or it might be a bad solder joint. Don't know. I need to look it over. Uh, I recommend using a surge strip with a toggle switch so you can actually turn it off and on if you need to in case this catches on fire. So make sure if you do mess around with this stuff um, if you do have a chance of maybe fire, I would recommend having a fire extinguisher close by. Uh, I always carry one just in case. Um, so that said, let's go ahead and look at this um, actual blanket. So the blanket is a Brookstone, as you can see here, uh, Brookstone blanket. Um, it has the specs on it in the back side of it. Uh, they tell you what the voltage is for this, the wattage is. Um, so that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and just check the, uh, the filaments on this one, the coils. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a multimeter. Um, I have it set at 20K. Um, so any, any one of those specifications is fine. So you should be able to see, you see a one, all right? So if I short out the two leads, all right, it should go to zero, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test the three prongs, all right? So I should get continuity on the back two, the furthest two, which I do, which is telling me the coils are good. Now the inner one, she, I should not get anything, all right? Which is good. All right, so the blanket is good. It needs to be washed though before we can use it or sell it. So that just said, I'm going to go ahead and, I know this doesn't work, so Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you. That doesn't work. So I'm gonna bring the blanket back out. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug her in. Alright, she's seated, nice and plugged. Alright, here's here's the control console. I'm gonna go ahead and plug her in. Turn the switch on. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and push the power button. You notice I got no lights, no LED lights pop up. There's nothing. Completely dead. I know I'm getting power through here because you can actually see my high, um, soldering iron getting heated up now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. Alright, so this doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that. I'll move the blanket over here so it's all the way. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and work on this. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pop the these out. I already took some of them out already. So now I'll go ahead and use my screwdriver. I like this screwdriver because it has multiple different ends. So you have your standard and your Phillips. Also have a fine-tuned one, so this works fine for what we're using here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this open, set this aside, and this is pretty much it. All right. And you know the place for the LEDs, the power button, or power button slash toggle switch, it tells you what the temperature you want it to be at. Alright, this is the unit. Okay. This here go plugged right into the electric blanket itself. And this is your power. You mean AC power that plugs into the plug. Alright. Make sure it's unplugged before you start messing with this or taking it apart. Because this here can be very painful. Alright. So 
right now I'm looking for any kind of um, bad solder joints, something that was blown. Uh, I'm looking for the fuses. So the main thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the fuses. And so far, fuses must be on the other side. Right? You know, see, it says D for each. Each thing is labeled. So D is a diode. This is an integrated chip. These are resistors. There's another diode. Everything can be tested. These are, I know the LEDs because they're on the other side. These are the LEDs. Okay. So F, F2 is telling me that's a fuse. So let's go ahead and test that since we already have this on. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually test the fuse, see if it's any good. So it should zero out if it's good. Okay, good. All right. All right. So we got a good. We got a fuse here. I'm just checking to see where the location of that fuse where it goes. So the fuse is here. All right. This is your main AC. The fuse comes through here. Goes through all these components. Goes the diodes. Alright, so I'm not seeing anything else here, so let's look for the thermal cutout um, switch. Alright, see if that's wrong. That'll be this one. Yep, here's fuse number one, so F, F1. There's F1, F2, so there's two fuses. Alright. Chances are it's most likely this one. So let's go ahead and check that. I should get some kind of resistance. I'm getting nothing. Nothing at all. Zero zip. So maybe that's the only thing wrong with it. And I'm looking at it and it, you can see it actually burnt out. So let me see if I can let me bring that up a little bit closer to you. Let's see if you yeah. this where'd it go? This one right here. Okay. So I'm gonna have to replace that. What I'm gonna replace it with, I do have one in stock, is I'm gonna I use the NTE conversion chart to find a compatible um, one for it. And this is a compatible for this particular one. Alright. The NT8000. It's a thermal cutout. Right. Gives you the specs. Right. And so what I'm going to do is, it comes with two. There's two of them inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace this and see if that fixes it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and wait for the, he the heating. Go sorry, all right. The soldering iron is now hot and ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get this hot and get this removed. So I'm just going to do that. Um, if you have a desoldering gun, that would be ideal. Alright. Uh, I do have desoldering guns. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and just show you the differences in the. See if this has resistance like the other one. Right. Let me show you the differences. Alright, grab my, my leads. And I'm gonna go ahead and just test that real quick. I gotta make sure it works anyway, so. Notes there's a so it's like to shorten it out. That's what we want. All right, so we know this one's bad. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop this one out, and I'll be right back with you. Look, all right. I just got finished um, removing 
the thermistor, which is right here. All right, I use my desoldering iron, which is nice to use because you just put it over it, get it hot, and it just sucks up the solder. All right, it's quick and easy. Right. Here's my solder that I'm gonna need. Here's my thermistor. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the little plastic sleeves off and put them on the new one. So now I have them both in there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna bend it to the right position when we need it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put, turn it upside down. And the first one, I'll go ahead and put it in. Oops, too much. I think I was bended that one in. Like so. And bend it like so. Alright, so let's go and get that in. Get both of them in. And go ahead and put the thermistor underneath the resistor. So if the resistor ever gets too hot, it should blow that thermistor. Okay. All right. That should do it. That was good. All right. Now, on the thermistors, when you're soldering the thermistors, if you, if you just solder it like it is, what's going to happen is you're going to blow it. All right. Because the temperature is, a little, is way greater than what that rating is going to be it. Alright, so we need to the spruce to get the so what we're going to need to do is we're going to um, get the, the heat away from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these alligator clips. I'm going to clip it on the one side here. Hopefully I get it on right. Get that sleeve out of the way. So, test make sure that I got that on there. I'm gonna go ahead and use my digital meter again. Because I got that plastic sleeving, so I wanna make sure. Yeah, see, so it should disperse the heat pretty good. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start soldering that one side in. Now I'm gonna test it again. And then I'll do the other side. Okay. Alright, so let's go get the solder gun out. Alright. I have a good tin on it. Oops. Guess you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and move it down over here. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, let's see if I blew it or not.
Full fragment. Let's do good. 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 Okay. So we got that one done. All right. So now. side now. Alright. So I got that on. Now let's go ahead and test that and make sure that it's on. Move this around a little bit so I can get to it. Alright. So from here to here I have a test. Good. Alright, now the last one, alright, try not to blow it, because I only had the two that I ordered. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and clean my tip again. Coat it up, alright, looks good. So let's go ahead and solder the last piece. Nope, it did not pop. Nice. All right. Good. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and test her out now. I'm let her cool off for a little bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, that should be good enough time to, for it to cool off. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the these LA, these leads. thermal paste between the thermistor and the resistor. Uh, I didn't have the cheapy stuff. All I had was the, the Arctic silver thermal paste. You can use the white paste. I recommend that. This is more expensive. But this is all I had in my laying around. So I'm going to go ahead and use the more expensive stuff. I use this stuff for replacing uh, when I'm working on GPUs or CPUs uh, for the heat sinks. I use this stuff to replace it. This works a lot better than the stuff they usually put on from the factories. All right, I'm gonna get that out of the way. I'm gonna get this out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back together and see if it even turns on. And watch out, the, the paste is kind of icky. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and put it together. Put it over here so you can see what I'm doing. One side, and then the other two sides is all good. All right. Everything looks okay. So let's go ahead and put this bad boy back together. We did. Okay, nice. I'm gonna go put the screws back in. I like using the uh, ice ice cube tray to put your components in. So when you take something apart, you can actually label on which which one they are. 
That way you know where it's at all the time. Some people don't, some people do. I do. You notice I got that messy. That's okay, I can clean that off with some alcohol. And the last screw. So let's give her a test again. Let's see if she works. Alright. So all the irons are off. And look, she kicks right on. All right, so let's go ahead and hook up the blanket to it and see if I fixed it. All right, All right you got the blanket here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that thing in. All right, so I got the blanket here. I got it plugged in. So let's go ahead and see if it gets hot. There we go. All right, so turn it on. All right, gotta make sure I turn my surge strip out. Turn it on. You notice there's a light for low heat. Increase the heat so we can fill it faster. Yeah, just do the whole thing. Yep, she's getting hot. So, as you can see, well, I guess you can't. Let me see if I can. because I have a light above me. But you can see the, it is getting hot, so. See now it's off. First, second, third, high. All right, so this is how you test and uh, fix heating blankets. All right, so, yep, it's nice and toasty. All right, so that's it for this. So, I hope you guys learned something or helped you out if you're if you had one that busted too. Uh, remember, I got this from a um, um, liquidation from Amazon. So that said, hope this helps you guys out and troubleshooting and trying to fix these things out. So, all right, you guys have a good day. Bye bye.